This video shows how to properly use the Allaire filariasis test strip. The filariasis test strip, or FTS, is one diagnostic test recommended by WHO for Transmission Assessment Surveys, or TAS, in all areas where Ruchereria bancrofti causes lymphatic filariasis. Each FTS kit comes sealed in an individual foil pouch that contains one test strip, one plastic work tray, and a desiccant packet. The box of 30 kits also contains 32 calibrated micropipettes, a product insert, a procedure card, and adhesive sticker type labels. The kit does not contain the other supplies you will need, including lancets, cotton, alcohol swabs, gloves, sharps containers, absorbent underpads, marker pens, trash bags, a watch or timer, and recording forms. There are some basic guidelines to consider when using the FTS. Kits should be stored at 2 to 37 degrees Celsius, ideally at 4 degrees Celsius. FTS kits should never be frozen. The FTS kit is stable until the expiration date marked on the outer packaging when stored as specified. Test kits that are past their expiration date should not be used. During testing, care should be taken not to expose strips to extreme heat or direct sunlight for prolonged periods of time. Where available, a positive control should be used to assess two test strips from each lot of kits before beginning any field surveys. The test strips should be selected randomly from different boxes. Limited quantities of positive control can be obtained from the Filariasis Research Reagent Repository Center. The positive control should be used in the same way as a blood sample. If available, a calibrated pipette can be used to measure 75 microliters of control. The control should be placed on the sample pad and allowed to develop for 10 minutes. If a calibrated pipette is not available, the micropipette included with the kit can be used. Results should be interpreted and recorded at exactly 10 minutes. The date the test was performed should be included as part of the recorded information. If the results are questionable, a second reader should immediately read the strip. The positive control is designed to give a weak positive result. The test line that appears may be very faint. If possible, results should be documented by photograph. If either of the test strips is negative when tested with this control, the entire lot should not be used. If kits are stored for more than two months without use, but are still within their expiration date, two additional kits should be tested for quality control before using them for a survey. If either of the strips is negative at this time, the entire kit lot should not be used. It is important to set up and organize the blood collection and FTS processing stations before the first blood sample is collected. A flat work surface is necessary to ensure the FTS can be conducted properly. Usually, a table and chairs can be provided by the school or community where the survey is being conducted. The workstation should be covered with absorbent underpads. In many cases, different team members will be responsible for blood collection, labeling and processing FTS, and reading test results. In these situations, the blood collector will often perform the finger stick, collect blood into the provided micropipette, and will pass the filled micropipette to the team member responsible for labeling and applying the sample to the test strip. Once the blood is applied to the sample pad, the test strip will then be passed to the FTS reader, who is responsible for keeping track of the development time and reading the test results. When different team members perform these tasks, care should be taken to set up a workstation conducive to this workflow. The team members should be in close proximity to each other, but still have enough space for their individual tasks. 
Although it is technically possible for one person to perform these tasks, it is highly recommended to have a minimum of two people per team, which will allow one person to be dedicated solely to the timing and reading of test results. Kit components should be brought to ambient temperature, 15 to 37 degrees Celsius, before use. The test strip should not be used if the foil pouch is open or damaged. The strip should remain in its foil pouch until just before use, and the storage boxes should be kept as dry as possible. During a survey, multiple pouches can be opened at one time, but be careful not to open more kits than necessary. The number of open kits should not exceed the number of individuals to be tested. The test strip and plastic work tray should remain in the foil pouch to reduce the risk of the strip blowing away. Once the kit is open, it should be used within one hour. When ready to perform a test, the strip and tray should carefully be removed from the foil pouch. If the strip needs to be handled directly, it should be held at the end without the arrows. Remove the desiccant packet from the tray and put it aside. The test strips are very lightweight. The labeled strip should be secured to the provided plastic tray to reduce the risk of blowing away. This can be done with the adhesive patient label or with tape. Each FTS should be labeled with an appropriate, unique patient identifier using the provided sticker or alternative label. Labeling should be done before blood collection. Wearing clean disposable gloves, the blood collector should clean the finger to be pricked with alcohol, allow the finger to air dry, and use a disposable lancet to collect blood into the provided micropipette. The used lancet should be placed in an appropriate sharps waste container. Allow blood to flow freely from the pricked finger directly into the micropipette provided in the test kit. The micropipette uses capillary action and will fill automatically. Do not place the tip of the micropipette directly on the finger or else there will not be sufficient airflow for the capillary action to work. Do not squeeze the bulb end of the micropipette when collecting samples. Hold the micropipette slightly below the horizontal plane and allow it to fill completely to the marked line. Avoid getting air bubbles in the micropipette. The completely filled micropipette should carefully be passed to the team member responsible for performing the FTS. Care should be taken to hold the filled micropipette horizontally to avoid spillage. Slowly add the blood sample to the lower half of the sample pad by gently squeezing the bulb. It is recommended to add the blood one drop at a time and allow the blood to saturate the sample pad before adding the next drop. The used micropipette should be placed in an appropriate waste container. Care should be taken to apply the blood to the labeled test strip corresponding to the person being tested. Do not add blood directly from the finger to the test strip. After the blood is applied to the sample pad, the plastic work tray holding the strip should be carefully passed to the team member responsible for timing and reading the test results. The tray should not be held in the vertical position. Do not disturb or move the test strip too much after the sample has been added. A clock is often used as the timer. The start time should be noted and 10 minutes should be added to determine the time the test is to be read. The reading time should be written on the plastic work tray or label. Recording the reading time is critical to help with organization when multiple tests are being conducted at the same time. Read test results 10 minutes after the sample has been added. Test results should be read using bright, unfiltered light. Faint lines can be difficult to see when lighting is not adequate. If the sample fails to migrate all the way up the strip in 10 minutes, the test is considered invalid and should be repeated if possible. Blood will sometimes migrate very slowly up the strip. You should never add water or saline to the sample pad to increase the rate of sample flow. If anticoagulated blood is used for FTS testing, it must be heparinized blood. Blood collected into EDTA cannot be used for FTS testing because it will produce a false positive. A pink-colored control line will appear for every valid test. The control line should be a solid line all the way across the strip in the top half of the results area. 
A second pink colored line will appear below the control line in the lower half of the results area for a positive test. Any visible pink test line should be interpreted as a positive result. A test that has only a visible control line after 10 minutes should be interpreted as negative. The test is invalid if the control line does not appear, whether a test line is present or not. If this occurs, the test should be repeated with a new test strip and a fresh blood sample if possible. The test result should immediately be recorded directly on the label or plastic work tray to document the interpretation of results at 10 minutes. Once recorded, test results can be transferred to an appropriate paper or electronic data collection form at a later time. A bench aid for the use of the FTS can be found on the NTD Support Center website.